Hi everyone, Felicity here today with a new Shimmer's design team layout for you. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I decided that I wanted to create a bit of an abstract background with my Shimmer's products. So what I do first is I use some masking tape and just rip off pieces, rip it in half, lay it down in no particular way. I wasn't worried about things being perfect. Abstract art is not symmetrical. It's a little bit all over the place. So that's what I decide to do here. If you don't have masking tape, you could always just use washi tape. Would do the same thing as well. So now what I decide to do is mix up some of the new Acritones products. Now your Acritones is a product that has a flat finish and it's self-priming as well. So I didn't actually put down any gesso for my background because the gesso is already in the Acritones. I then mixed it with some of the colorings and vibes. Now I didn't, I didn't add a lot of colorings or vibes to the acrotone so I didn't have to worry too much about the page warping because there wasn't too much liquid that was going to be there. It was quite thick as I was putting it down with the plastic packaging because if I had also the the products you know runny or had a lot of water with it you'd actually find that then it would probably seep underneath the masking tape or it could even seep through the masking tape as well I didn't want that to happen I wanted to be able to pull the masking tape off when it dries and actually see I guess the boxes and the abstract are underneath it so I did keep it all quite thick if you did want it to seep underneath, which would still give a really, really good effect, just add or spray some water or a little bit more of the colorings or vibes to it. I'll leave a link to all the colors that I've used um, to the Shimmers blog and also to my blog in the comments section. You'll be able to see what colors then that I've used. Now, I decided that I wanted to try something else experiment with the new pasties products. Now the pasties is also a very matte, has a matte finish. It's quite flat. There's no sparkle or shine to it at all. But I wanted to have a go at stamping out some images with that foam stamp. Uh, it added a, a really good texture, I guess, to my page because I actually end up fussy cutting these out and I don't use as many as what I hope to but I really, really liked how they turned out. You can see here with the pink, I added in some colorings called pink stilettos to the white pasties, which is called Salt of the Earth, and that gives it a little bit of a shine to it as well. What you could do is if you purchased the pasties putting on the glitz, which is also in the Shimmers shop, you put that over the top and it dries clear and it adds a lot of sparkle then to your shimmers, like your acritones or your pasties as well. So that's another option for you as well. If you're trying to use this technique, I probably would stick to a medium or a large stamp. I'm not sure how it would go with a smaller stamp. I mean, you can try that's all I do is I just simply experiment and see what I end up with because often when I experiment, that's the best, um, you could say the best page or the best technique that I seem to come up with is if I just simply play around with my paints. You can see too that the colorings and the paste is quite bright. There's a lot of shine to them. So if you want to tone them down a little bit, you can get the white acrotones called Three Sheets to the Wind and just add a little bit of that to it and it'll tone the products down. You could also then try and um, create different tones with the same product and go a little bit monochromatic, I guess. 
Now this abstract background is actually dried, so now I pull off the masking tape. I uh, absolutely love how it turned out. I'm going to do another page with the same technique and probably a different pattern because it was just so fun to make. I mean, I love getting messy fingers, so painting and that doesn't bother me at all. But yeah, like look at it. It just these acrotones actually blend and the pasties blend so nicely together. It's just beautiful. So now what I decide to do to make the these squares stand out a little bit more, I decide to hand stitch around each of the squares. Now, as you can see, when I put my holes for hand stitching, I don't pre-measure, I don't worry about them being a certain distance apart because, as I said, abstract art is not symmetrical, it's not neat and tidy. So I kind of wanted to keep that going as well. Now, some of the squares are actually the sides I didn't stitch, some I... Um, did some I didn't so it actually turns out really really well and you will see now very shortly when I decide to choose what threads I'm going to use at first I had in mind that I'd, I'd tone it down a little bit and use the pastel colors I guess of the pinks and the purples and the yellows and the greens and the blues but it just didn't look right so I end up actually stitching around them in the same very close to it in colors in just random you know probably I've probably got four pink ones and a yellow one and green I didn't think out too much as to what color was going to be what and as you can see here I am pulling out the brighter tones which turned out really really well it just made the, the background pop a little bit more there. It kept it fun, the background. And hand stitching, I guess, too, seems to be the latest trend at the moment. A lot of people are hand stitching. And, I mean, I just love hand stitching and always have done. I guess it takes me back to my earlier days when I used to hand stitch and cross stitch a lot. I used to spend my weekends cross stitching and doing tapestries and I just love needle and thread and still do. And I've actually still got a book that my mother gave me one year with all the different hand stitching techniques that you can do, your blanket stitching, your long stitch, your back stitch, your cross stitch. And so I actually use that book and still refer to it for different types of stitches. Now you can see here I've decided to cut out these flowers very roughly. Foxy cut them, wasn't in any particular order or way of doing it. So now I've got my flowers and I've hand stitched my background and it's all dry. I decide now with my photo to start putting my page together. Now I'm one of these people that saves all the packaging from paper bags, tissue paper, wrapping paper, napkins, you name it. I just, I can't throw them out. They're too pretty. So here I've used a paper bag that I've had along with some calico fabric and some tissue paper and start to back my photo. Now I actually cluster quite a lot around this a photo I do a lot of it off camera because it just it did take forever to do it <laughs> and now I'm kind of wishing that I didn't add in as many as embellishments as what I did because it kind of it it took away my background a little bit but that's okay I'll as I said I really want to do another layout with the similar technique so with less embellishments so you can see there that my cluster that I did off camera. Now, a lot of those in the cluster are stickers and puffy stickers, chipboard. What I actually do, because I move things around a lot before I stick them down, I actually back them all on scrap paper or cardstock and then I cut around them because then I can move them around on the page. 
add my 3D dots and lift it up a little bit. The collection that I've actually found that I used here that seemed to just match my background was the Crepe Paper Cute Girl collection, which I actually haven't used much of. But it just seemed, the colours just seemed to match in with the background. Because when I actually started my background, I didn't have any collection in mind. All I had was that photo of my daughter that just was, a, you know, a real fun photo, I guess, of what she, she was doing here. So I did, all I knew was that I wanted to create a page that had a lot of fun to it. So once it came time to work out my embellishments, as I went through my stash, I realised that the Cute Girl collection was what was going to match, match in. You can see that black scallop as well up the top. I, I had intentions of using it because it sat there for quite some time, but then I end up taking it off and I end up, I've got a scallop stamp here from the Prima Mixed Media stamp collection. And I actually end up stamping that out on white cardstock and hand cutting them out and add it to the top and the bottom of my mixed media background there. It just helps keep the eye then focused on the background a little bit. And I finish off backing it with some hand stitching, as you can see there, the finished product, some hand stitching there as my backing. So I really, I really did enjoy the process with my Shimmers products in creating the background. So make sure that you pop over to the Shimmers store. There is plenty of products there for you to purchase and to try. If you need some more inspiration, pop over to the Shimmers YouTube channel and have a look at the Shimmers shorts that Missy does every week. They give you some really fun, quick ideas of what to do with your products. As I said, I'll leave links in the comments to the Shimmers paint store, the Shimmers blog and my blog. And don't forget that when you check out at the Shimmers store to mention my name to get a free little surprise. Thanks for